Hello and welcome back to the next video in our series on Excel Draw version 6. In the previous videos we went over how to make basic shapes, how to work with layers, and today we're going to be going over the graphing section of the Excel Draw tab. And the first thing I want you to notice is I have a floor plan or a drawing actually uh, drawn up here inside of Excel Draw and it looks a little bit uh, muddled up right now and that is because this is a blueprint layout for a backyard and a playground set that's going to be going in there but as of right now there's two different layouts for the playground set. Let me explain what this is. So from this corner here this is the house this is a flower bed while this is a backyard concrete porch and stairs going up to a deck. The area around here is a flat area that the playhouse can go into and then we have the scale feet up there at the top. The reason why I have this and I'm showing this to you is because the first thing that we want to look at is the object manager, that option right here. If we bring up the object manager window, you're going to be greeted with a window that has a list of all of the different objects that you have currently created inside of your drawing. As you can see here, it has a list of all of the objects created and what this list does is it shows you the objects and you can also select them. So let's say that I want to know what this object is. I can select it and I can actually tell you how you can read the uh, names that are on here. But the little circle right there has just turned yellow. So as you can see that has changed to yellow. If I select this one it's going to change one of the lines to yellow. And there, that line is yellow. So now we know that that line has been selected. So the way that you can read this, so you kind of have an idea of what you're selecting, the first name that you see on these names is going to be the sheet that the drawing object is associated with. So it's going to be sheet one. Then you're going to see an underline and you're going to see three letters. The first letter represents the object type. So for instance, this A represents an arc. If it's a C, it's a circle, L is a line, R is a rectangle, and so on. The second letter represents the absolute or relative value. So as you can see right here, the first one is an arc. Now that arc is yellow. The relative values are right here. We're going to get into that whenever we get into the settings, but absolute is turned on by default. That basically means you put down a dimension of an X, Y, or Z location, and that is an absolute value. It is not in relation to anything else. If you have it set to relative, then that A is going to change to an R. So the second letter will be an R if it's a relative value and A for an absolute value. Finally, the last letter is going to be if it has Z values included. So the Z values included is also in the settings right there. If there are no Z values, it's going to have an N. And then if it does have Z values, that third letter is going to be a Z. The next letters after that, the first number that you get to is going to be your layer number. And then the long string of numbers and letters after that is a time slot for when that object was created. So that is how you break down the names of the objects. This will be more relevant when we talk about programming inside of Excel Draw and using VBA, but as of right now, that is how you read the names of the objects. So what all can you do inside of the drawing manager window? Well, you can select different objects. For instance, if you hold shift and click, you can see that all the objects from the first one that you selected down to the last one you selected are going to be highlighted, selected, and they're going to change to yellow on the chart or the graph. And as you can see here, all of the selected points have changed to yellow. Let's say that you have all these points, but you want them all on a separate layer. All you have to do is select the ones that you want to change a layer to and you can go right over here, drop down whatever layer it is, and then hit change layer and it will change all of those to that layer. If we don't want to see the yellow and blue 
drawings. We just want to see it like normal. All we have to do is toggle off preview colors and then the colors go back to the way they normally are. If you have preview colors deselected, then whenever you select a object, it is not going to update the graph in the background. It'll just keep it as normal. If you'd like to show all the objects inside of this window, just select show all objects, but we only have one sheet that we're working with, so we can just leave that alone. If you would like to have it select a cell range whenever you select an object here, because as you can see, it's not selecting the cell range. But if we toggle on select cell range, you can now see that, hey, it selects that range for you. So you can jump around wherever you need to be. For instance, the house is right there. And wherever that object is, it will automatically select it for you. Now we get into the options down here. Deleting an object will just delete the object that you've drawn, but it will not remove the data. You do that by selecting whatever objects you want and then clicking delete objects. You can also delete the ranges if you want. That will delete the objects and it'll also delete the values on the sheet as well. You can delete all, which will delete all of the objects for you and it will just leave you with a brand new canvas or drawing with no objects on it. Refresh will refresh the graph and export will bring up our export window that will allow you to export your documents into a DXF format. If you want to also rotate the graph, you can bring up the graph orientation window right here and it will allow you to rotate and zoom and pan, things like that. The final thing that I want to show you is the distances. So when you select more than one object, you can actually get a distance point from one object to the other. You can select if you want to start with the X, Y, or Z in either axis. You can see this first point, point number one, the first one we have selected is an arc, and the second one that we have selected is a circle. So it's taking the first two that you have selected, telling you the points where they're associated at, and then it's giving you a direct distance down below. The last thing I wanted to show you is the ability to hide layers inside of your drawing. So right now you can see in the middle of the drawing manager, there's a checkbox for all layers. And then you also have the individual checkbox going from zero to nine. So these are the nine layers that you can have inside your drawings and you can toggle them on or off. For instance, I know that one of the playsets is on layer four. So if I just deselect layer four, then the chart updates in the background and shows me the other playset. So I can see just one playset at a time. Or let's say I don't want to see any of the playsets. So let's deselect layer five. And as you can see, there's no more playsets back there. The beautiful thing about this is whenever you close out of this window, it still keeps that in its memory. So you can go refresh the graph and those objects are still hidden. As you can see, there is with our layer coloring, you can have that option turned on as well. If you ever want to bring those layers back up and show some of the hidden layers, all you have to do is go right back into the object manager and show whichever layers that you want. The next option we're going to look at is called the load drawing. This is how you can load into Excel Draw any kind of DXF that you want. Now there is a limit to how many you can have basically the bigger the drawing is, the more time it's going to take to load up. If you click on load drawing, it will remember where you have selected your cursor. So if let's say we have a new sheet right here, I'm going to put it at D4 and I'm going to load an, a drawing. So just load drawing. You can see that DXF Reader GT opens up. This is Excel Draws default DXF Reader. This is also a program that is available for purchase on our website, but every version of Excel Draw version 6 comes with a free install of DXF Reader GT. So if you purchase Excel Draw version 6, you will automatically get this application for free. So it's, it's a nice little added bonus and it also works with Excel Draw. Let me show you how this works. Whenever you go to load DXF, you can go to whichever DXF that you want. For instance, we have a bridge right here. It, I think it's a concrete bridge drawing. And as you can see, 
it has all of the information in here. Now, the reason why I said there is a limit to what you can load, it loads all of the information in here at once. And if the file is really large, it takes a long time to load it. So once you have this loaded in, go ahead and hit export to Excel. And if you have Excel draw installed, which we do, it will pick up where you last clicked on the cell that you're currently in, which would be D4. And it will paste all that data at D4. It will then loop through the process and go all the way down through your objects and create your drawing. Now, once it is created, it will close out of DXF Reader GT and will present you with your drawing. So as we have right here, this is a drawing of a bridge. Let's go ahead and open up the 3D orientation. And there we have our bridge. The next thing I want to show you is the export DXF. Now I previously covered this in another video very shortly, but how this works is whenever you click export DXF, it'll come up with this window, which will allow you the opportunity to export your drawing into whatever format you want. You can have a DXF, a text file, an Excel document, or a CSV. So we want a DXF file, and I'm going to name this test playground and you need to select your export folder. Right now I have it set to the desktop. You can change that to whatever you want it to be. I just have it set to the desktop right now and I'm going to hit export. It's going to go through the process, convert everything to a DXF and export it. And it's going to ask you if you'd like to open it. Now I'm going to have to open it on another screen and bring it over because I do not actually have a DXF program installed. So let me go ahead and do that. And as you can see here, we have a DXF drawing made up of exactly the same thing that we had before. And we even have all the layers included in it. So if we want to hide these layers, all we have to do is go in here, toggle them off, and it'll look exactly the same as we see there. Which I think it's, yep, that one. So it looks exactly the same as it does on Excel Draw. Now the last two options inside of Excel Draw in the graphing tab is the 3D orientation window, which we've already seen. I'll briefly show that off to you again because there is one added feature that I did not mention before, and that is this option right here, which will rotate your graph for you. So if you drag and drop it, it'll rotate it in that direction. It's a little bit easier for some people to understand how the rotation works by moving the box instead of moving the of uh, the scroll bars but it's entirely up to you how you would like to rotate it it you know just your own personal preference you have the zoom in zoom out and you also have presets for anything that you want as far as top view bottom view front view 3d view all those options are on there and we covered this previously in the adding objects function if you'd like to go back and watch that i get more in depth with this tool as well the final thing is a generate graph which will basically just regenerate the graph for you that concludes this video lesson on the graphing portion inside of excel draw if you have any questions please leave a comment down below let us know and if you'd like to try excel draw out for yourself there is a link to the application in the description there's also links to our main website and if you'd like to stay up to date with all of the tutorials that we have to offer please consider subscribing to the channel that will keep you up to date with all our tutorial videos and even our newsletters as well thank you all very much have a great rest of your day Hi, I'm Kyle, owner and operator of Great Technical. Thank you all so much for making it at this point in the video. And if you are here, go ahead, like, and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot, and it lets me know that the content I'm making is stuff that you all like to see. Go ahead, leave us a comment as well. Let me know if there's anything that you would like to see in the future, or if you have any future updates that you would like to have included in our products in the future. I would also like to say that being a company owner, 
I am very proud to be able to support businesses and students. I am also extremely proud to be able to support content creators. So if you have a content platform, you make videos, or if you have a blog and you would like to reuse some of our content, or if you would like to review some of our products, go ahead and send me an email. My email is right here, support at greattechnical.com. Get in contact with me. We can see what we can get worked out. And until next time, thank you all very much. Have a great rest of your day.